Dosan is one of the 24 forms of the Chang Hon form system named after the pen name of General Choi Hong Hee, the father of Taekwondo, who developed this set of forms. It contains 24 movements representing the life of Korean independence activist <laughs> An Chang Ho, whose pen name gives the form its name. Dosan lived from 1876 to 1938. In addition to dedicating his life to the Korean independence movement, educational reform and modernizing schools were two key efforts of Dosan. He might also have written the lyrics of the South Korean national anthem. Mm. The form begins with a left outer forearm block while stepping into a front stance with the left foot. It is important to look first in the direction the move will be executed. Look left. Simultaneously, the right fist rises to the left shoulder while the left arm reaches across the lower torso towards the right. Think of the right fist as protecting the face from an imaginary opponent on the left. The arms appear to be hugging the body. As the right arm retracts backwards into a chamber position, the left arm executes a left outer forearm block as the body turns counterclockwise and the left foot steps left into a front stance. When the left arm executes the outer forearm block, the move should be powerful. It takes place simultaneously with the left foot touching down, and so is the chambering of the right fist. At the end of its motion, the left arm should be in front of the torso, above the left leg with the elbow exhibiting a slightly larger than 90 degree angle. One should be able to see above the knuckles just barely. The right arm is chambered. The stances are immensely important for all techniques in general and equally so in forms. The front stance has feet diagonal with respect to the torso and separated by about a shoulder width sideways and about twice that much front to back. Mm. Toes of both feet face forward, even though the toes of the rear foot could be facing a little outwards. The heels need to be firmly on the ground and the weight is evenly distributed over both feet. The rear leg is straight and the front knee is bent at about a 90 degree angle such that one can just be able to see the toes of the front foot over the knee. The torso is straight and facing forward. It is useful to remember to push the hips forward in order to get the torso facing fully forward. Once the hips are both facing forward squarely, the rest of the torso follows easily. Without changing the stance, execute a right reverse punch at mid-level, targeting the solar plexus just below the breastbone. A good way to target effectively in general is to use the location of the body parts of one's own anatomy and target the techniques exactly at the same location on an imaginary opponent throughout the form. As an additional enhancement, before throwing the reverse punches without stepping forward, a small mm -hmm. cocking of the punching arm tactfully underlines the power of the technique substantially. One should not do any such extra movement that telegraphs intentions during sparring or self-defense, but in forms, it contributes to the form constructively. The next move is a right outer forearm block while turning behind into a right front stance. The move starts with looking behind over the right shoulder, noticing a new imaginary opponent. As the arms hug the body in front with the left fist poking over the right shoulder and the right arm reaching across the lower torso towards the left side of the body, the left foot takes a shoulder width step towards the right. Moving the weight of the body onto the left leg, the body turns around 180 degrees explosively while the right foot moves to the right about a shoulder width. The right arm executes the block as the right foot touches down and the torso completes its turn, adding power to the block. The left arm pulls rapidly into a tight chamber position at the same time. All the details about a good front stance should be practiced. Without changing the stance, execute a left reverse punch at mid-level, targeting the solar plexus. 
The next move is a double knife hand block in a back stance. Look left. As the left foot steps forward and to the left into a back stance position, the hands swing together from the right to the left with the left hand out forward, palm facing away, and the right hand close to the chest, palm facing up. The back stance has the feet forming an L shape with the heels about a shoulder width apart. Toes of the front foot face forward while toes of the rear foot face to the side at a 90 degree angle. The torso is straight and faces sideways. A majority, about 70% of the weight, is on the rear foot and both knees are bent. Step forward into a right front stance with a mid-level spear hand with the right hand. As the right arm lunges forward, the left arm first sweeps outwards before bending at the elbow and moving to the right, stopping in front of the lower torso with the left hand sporting the right elbow straight. The target of the spear hand is again the solar plexus. Kiap, shout on this move. With all the techniques when a step forward is executed together with a percussive move, in order to accomplish maximum power, the right hand performs its full range of movement just as the forward step touches down. After the spear hand, there comes a breakaway. The technique can be understood better by assuming that an opponent grabbed the wrist of the right hand. Twist the right wrist clockwise so that the palm faces up. Bend the wrist towards yourself and move it first towards you by bending the elbow and then down. Pivot on both feet counterclockwise and execute a downward sweeping motion with the right hand. As you push your right hand down the side of your body, also twist the wrist counterclockwise to enhance the breakaway. There are two advanced alternatives to this move. One is to break away by bringing the rear foot forward and pushing the right arm forward and to the left. The other way is not to break away at all and allow the wrist to be held while executing the next move to hit the opponent with a back fist. After the breakaway, spin on the right foot 270 degrees to face forward in the same direction as the spear hand into a left front stance while executing a left back fist to the temple. There are a few details to keep in mind here. The back fist begins with the left fist reaching beside the right ear as the right hand reaches underneath the left arm for the left side of the torso. As left fist completes the back fist with the wrist slightly bent outwards for the knuckles to contact the target, the right hand is chambered. Another important aspect is valid throughout the whole form. Once the stance of the first move is reached, all the rest of the moves should be performed in a way that keeps the head on the same level vertically. The head should not be bobbing up and down from move to move or in between moves. The turn in this move can be executed in a few different ways. The most straightforward method is to simply spin on the right foot. On the other hand, this might cause the head to rise higher and also for the body to experience balance issues. An alternate method has the right foot first pulling back closer to the left foot and the left foot stepping around without the body spinning. This latter method is slightly slower overall but reduces the duration of time when only a single foot is on the floor. Yet another alternative is somewhere in between with footwork similar to the former and a step around type of turn as the latter. Next, step forward into a right front stance with a right back fist. One needs to make sure that as a mirror image of the previous move, the right fist first reaches for the left ear while the left arm hugs the lower torso. Both arms move explosively as the right foot touches the floor with the right fist ending in a back fist to the target's right temple and the left arm in tight chamber position. The following four moves are similar to the first four moves of Dosan. Left outer forearm block, right reverse punch, and in the opposite direction, right outer forearm block and left reverse punch. To move into these, pivot on the right foot counterclockwise 270 degrees into a left front stance with a left outer forearm block. Keeping the feet in position, execute a right reverse punch to the solar plexus. Before beginning the move, look right, noticing another opponent, over the right shoulder, and halfway through the spin, turn the head around to resume looking over the left shoulder. 
All the details that apply to the moves at the beginning of the form apply at this point also. After that, look over the right shoulder and move left foot inward about a shoulder width. Then move right foot and turn clockwise 180 degrees into a right front stance while executing a right outer forearm block. Just as earlier, while keeping the feet in position, execute a left reverse punch. The next set of moves will address two diagonals towards the starting position. Look left over the shoulder and turn the body left 135 degrees into a left front stance. The feet can simply rotate in place to get into the new position, but it is also possible to pick up and move the left foot to the left a few inches. Both fists come to chamber positions during the turn. Towards the front, execute a high wedging block with closed fists against a chokehold or a lapel grab by an opponent. The fists should end up just below eye level and about two fists apart. With the fists in the high wedging block position, execute a right front kick targeting the solar plexus. Either the ball of the foot or the heel can be used as the striking surface. After the refold, while lowering the foot into a right front stance, reach forward with the left arm and follow it with a right punch at the moment the foot touches down and the left punch rapidly afterwards, both mid-level to the solar plexus. Mirror images of the previous set of moves are executed towards the right diagonal also. Look right and turn right into a right front stance while bringing both fists to chamber position. Towards the front, execute a high wedging block with closed fists. Execute a left front kick similar to the previous one. While lowering the foot into a left front stance, reach forward with the right arm and follow it with a left and right punch, both mid-level. The kicks in this set of moves are another point where there is a tendency to raise the head up. One needs to pay special attention to maintain the level of the head while performing the front kicks and stepping forward afterwards. The non-punching arm should be chambered each time. Look left towards the starting position and move the left foot in that direction while turning the body about 45 degrees into a left front stance and executing a left high block. The blocking arm in a high block travels upwards with the fist leading the way until it reaches about hat level at which point the rest of the arm snaps upwards at the elbow and ending with the forearm above head level and slightly to the front. Next, step forward into a right front stance with a right high block. Look to the right, identify the new threat and spin 180 degrees counterclockwise on the right foot into a middle stance and execute a knife hand with the left hand targeting the opponent's neck. The knife hand begins with the left hand reaching towards the right ear and swinging out and to the left from there with the palm ending facing downwards. As with all the other moves, the off hand starts with reaching for the opposite side of the body and ends with a strong chamber, strong enough to be an elbow strike towards the back. The middle stance has the feet parallel to each other, separated by about two shoulder widths when with toes facing forward. The knees are bent into a deep seated position with the back straight and weight equally split between both heels. The weight should be mostly on the heels in such a way that one should be able to move the toes without affecting one's balance. The knees should be pushed outwards in the middle stance. Look again to the right, the final threat. Bring left foot to right foot while staying level and keeping knees bent and then step out with right foot into another middle stance. During the last step, execute a right knife hand strike, again targeting the opponent's neck. Key up on this move. Remain in middle stance with right knife hand held out in strike position and face turned towards the right until prompted by the instructor.